Hi, my name is Barb Nangle. I'm the founder of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery. This is Episode 5, Affirming Ourselves. In the last episode, I spoke about negative thought loops and how to get out of them. There's another thing we can do to overcome negative thoughts, and that's with positive thoughts. I specifically chose not to entitle this podcast Affirmations or The Power of Affirmations because I know they sometimes get a bad rap. But the reality is, if you spent decades of your life telling yourself what a piece of shit you are, you're going to have to spend some time replacing those negative thoughts with something else. Well, if you want to be happy, joyous, and free, that is. Think about it. If you've walked around thinking, I'm not enough, or I'll never catch up, or I can never do anything right, how could you possibly feel like enough, ever feel like you've caught up, or feel like you've done something right, when this program is playing in the background all the time? I've been saying affirmations of various kinds for years. And what's really cool is when they become my go-to thoughts. For example, unlike most people in recovery who have low self-esteem and think they're not enough, I tend to be grandiose and arrogant. Now, I don't want to have those thoughts any more than people with low self-esteem want to think I'm a piece of crap. I just do. I just have them. I really think it's just the opposite side of the coin from thinking I'm not enough. Instead of I'm not enough, it's I'm too much. In other words, I'm not the right amount of whatever, whether it's too much or too little, not productive thoughts. For me, the game changer in regard to the I'm too much thought happened when I was in a yoga nidra class and the teacher took us through an exercise to help us determine our sankalpa. This is a vow or and commitment we make to support our highest truth. Now, I don't remember what the question was that she used to prompt us to start our writing. And I really wish I did, because if I did, I'd give you that question right now. But whatever it was, we were asked to write down what is the major issue that has plagued you for most of your life and then put that into a short phrase. So for me, it was I'm too much. We were then asked to come up with a phrase, a sankalpa, that is the opposite of that short phrase that had plagued us forever. So I came up with a phrase, I had to diddle with it for a little while, and eventually it morphed into I am just the right amount of everything. What's interesting is that when I first came up with it, I used to have to say it all the time in various situations when I would have these thoughts come up or I'd have these inclinations to sort of shrink and become small. I would have to say, I'm just the right amount of everything. And that really shifted things for me. Now, with this particular phrase, I decided that it was going to be my sankalpa. So I believed it. I'll talk more about believing what you're telling yourself in a few minutes. For now, just know that that was not a problem for me with this particular affirmation. Now, I just say it once in the morning with my prayers and readings and other affirmations. Very rarely do I need to say it in the middle of something to pull myself out of some shitty thinking I'm doing. And it's a result of this new thinking that I have reprogrammed my mind to do that I don't have to do this on a regular basis. So one of the points I'm trying to make here is that going from negative thoughts to affirmations is a process. It takes time. You were not born with thoughts of not being enough. You were programmed and it's time to change that programming, which is going to take a while. Speaking of programming, there are a few folks I'm going to reference here because I think they do some really great work on how to change our thinking. And the first one is actually a computer programmer. His name is Sir John Hargrave, and he wrote a book called Mind Hacking, which, by the way, is available free as a PDF book. Just Google it, mind hacking. 
In any case, he's a computer programmer who decided to use the principles of computer programming to change his mind. Briefly, he called his negative thought loops problem loops, and he equated them to programming loops. This is what helped him to get out of them. He says these negative thought loops are limitations we put on ourselves, others, and the world. Notice that these are not actual limitations on us, others, or the world. They exist just in our minds. What we consider possible and impossible are just ideas. They're not the truth. So it is true that you may be having these thoughts, but the thoughts themselves are not true. They are loops to be reprogrammed. So I'm going to quote him directly here. He says, what you consider possible and impossible for yourself are just ideas. They're loops that can be reprogrammed. You can find the boundaries of what you consider possible and consciously widen them. You can achieve the impossible by training your mind to believe otherwise. Consciously reshape your thoughts and you can actively reshape the world around you. Side note, I have a quote in my bathroom that says, impossible is just an opinion. And I leave it there to remind me that my mind is what places the greatest limits on me or other people's minds. What other people say is impossible. Back to Hargrave. He goes on to say, as I realized my reprogramming could become as big as I imagined, it became an intellectual challenge for me to think up the biggest loops I could. While I suppose an infinite loop would technically be the largest, I found the idea of an exponentially increasing loop to be more exciting. Each night before I go to sleep, I mentally repeat the loop. My ability to bring amazing things into the world is exponentially increasing. So that's the end of his quote. So that affirmation that he just shared is actually one of the daily affirmations that I've said now for years, but I say it about the universe. So mine is my ability to bring amazing things into the universe is exponentially increasing. And it actually feels true for me. In fact, this podcast is a manifestation of that. Another one of the people who's influenced me greatly in terms of affirming myself is Brooke Castillo from the Life Coach School. She is really amazing and thinks in ways that I've never heard anyone before. I really encourage you to listen to her podcast. If you do, be sure to listen to the first few episodes where she lays out her philosophy, which she calls the model. If you don't listen to it, she refers to it all the time in subsequent episodes and you might get kind of lost. And it's also a great framework for thinking. So in any case, Brooke introduced me to the concept that she calls scaffolding your thoughts. Like Hargrave, she's talking about how to change the boundaries of what's possible in your mind. So this is where we're trying to change our thought patterns from something really negative to something really positive, but we have a hard time doing so. So we need to scaffold our thoughts. The thing is, it can be extremely hard for some of us to continue saying something to ourselves if we don't believe it, though believing it is not a requirement with affirmations. I'll say more about that later. What is required is that we be persistent with our affirmative statements. And if we simply can't be consistent because we can't believe the new statements, then we can scaffold our thoughts. So the best example that I've heard Brooke use has to do with how we feel about our body. So I'll use that same example. Say you've been saying, I hate my body for decades. It may feel impossible for you to switch to, I love my body with any kind of consistency. 
If that's the case, you can scaffold your way to I love my body by thinking something neutral, such as I have a body. Note that I have a body is very different from being hateful to your body and it's believable. So if you go from I hate my body to I have a body, the likelihood of you making the leap to I love my body increases tremendously. Try it. If there is some thought you have about yourself, like I'm a piece of shit, And you simply can't continue to tell yourself that you're worthy of love, for instance, then try something neutral, such as I am. After a time when the effects of the negative programming have decreased, which they will if you stop telling yourself that you're a piece of crap, you'll be able to make the shift to I am lovable much more easily. Now on to the third person who's influenced me greatly in terms of changing my mind about myself. This woman has been the greatest influence on my thought life and her name is Louise Hay. For those of you unfamiliar with her, she wrote a book called You Can Heal Your Life. She's also the one who started the publishing company Hay House, which publishes all kinds of personal growth material, by the way. Her work in You Can Heal Your Life comes from her own process of recovering from the traumas of her life. Her philosophy in a nutshell is that our mental patterns create illness and disease in our bodies. So I'm about to read an excerpt from her book and it comes from one of the introductory pages and it's called Some Points of My Philosophy. I want to share them here so you can see where she's coming from, but you don't have to agree with her philosophy. If you want to have a better thought life, you just have to change your thoughts. You don't have to believe any of this stuff. So here are some points about her philosophy. Every thought we think is creating our future. The point of power is always in the present moment. Everyone suffers from self-hatred and guilt. The bottom line for everyone is I'm not good enough. It's only a thought and a thought that can be changed. Side note, it is true that you are having a thought, but the thought itself is not necessarily true just because you think it. Back to her list. Resentment, criticism, and guilt are the most damaging patterns. Releasing resentment will dissolve even cancer. We must be willing to begin to learn to love ourselves. Self-approval and self-acceptance in the now are the keys to positive changes. By the time I read Louise Hay, I had already had a couple of experiences that convinced me that it was true that certain issues manifest as illnesses and or injuries in our bodies. One such experience was when I read the book, Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom by Christiane Northrup, who said, among other things, that menstrual issues always have to do with the family. I was like, oh my God, holy shit, that explains everything. Because as soon as I read that, I realized that the fact that I had just recently started getting my period again after not having it for months was because I had connected, reconnected with my estranged father. It didn't last, but I reconnected with him very briefly. And I was astounded when I went and I took a look at my calendar where I was keeping track of my menstruation and when I had connected with my dad. Then I had another experience involved involving me injuring my lower back, which I now understand has to do with stability. And I injured it on the same weekend that I consulted a consumer credit counselor about my debt. So both of these experiences convinced me that there was something to this philosophy. So when I got my hands on Louise Hayes book, I really paid attention. So I'm going to share now some of my most important affirmations beyond the one where I say, I am just the right amount of everything. So one of them is I am part of the perfect rhythm and flow of life. All is in divine right order. This helps me remember that I'm not in charge and that all is well. Even when things don't look like they're going well, I know they are 
because I trust in the inherent goodness of the universe. And I do that because anything that's happened in my life, no matter how shitty it looks while it's happening, has either turned out great or has led to something really amazing once I had the perspective of time. Another one is my life is divinely guided. I'm always going in the best direction. One of the things I love about this particular affirmation is that there's movement. It talks about being guided and going and direction. So this is another acknowledgement of the fact that I'm not in charge, that I'm always moving forward and that wherever I'm headed, it will turn out well. I also say I am creating healing experiences for more and more people daily. This affirmation came out of the work I did from reading Mind Hacking. It's actually my mission to create more healing in the world because of the tremendous impact that my recovery has had on me in terms of my healing and my growth and changing. In fact, my service work and my recovery communities feels like a calling to me. It's effortless and it really feels like a gift to me. A few more of my affirmations are... I live by serendipity, taking advantage of opportunities as they arise without fear. I am a clear communicator, understood by everyone. I draw more loving people into my life at every moment. I welcome and receive all abundance in my life from expected and unexpected sources. I am successful and success leads to more freedom in my life. And I say that one in particular to remind myself that being a successful entrepreneur does not mean I must work a ton of hours and neglect my personal life. One of my hesitations in starting my own business was that I didn't want to work all the time, which is what my father did when he started his own business. And it's what I hear all the time from other entrepreneurs or people aspiring to be entrepreneurs. I don't believe this to be true, but I need to remind myself of this all the time, which is why I say that particular affirmation. So that was just a sampling of some of the affirmations I say at this time. There have been many others over the years. Um, If you want help coming up with affirmations for yourself, I recommend you consult any one of the sources I listed, which I'll repeat again in a moment. Or you can do what I did and write out what your main issue is in a short phrase, then come up with the opposite of that to counteract it. So as a reminder, mine was I'm too much. And the antidote to that is I am just the right amount of everything. Now, the three sources I mentioned earlier were one mind hacking by Sir John Hargrave, which is a free PDF book. Just Google it. The second was the Life Coach School podcast by Brooke Castillo, which should be available on any podcast outlet. And the book You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. That's it for this week. Tune in again for the next episode. Be sure to share this with anyone who might find it helpful. Thanks for listening. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can get future episodes of my podcast.